Welcome to the PLZ Soccer Show. Barry Ferguson's with us. Alan Ruff is here. Uh, the great thing about this programme on a regular basis is uh, every opinion we have, uh, usually we suffer pelters from it. Ruffy is behind the eight ball, <coughs> it's fair to say, Barry, because he's missed a few players, which has annoyed certain fans. Uh, in the Player of the Year nominations, which undoubtedly will start to emerge over the next uh, three or four weeks. He's missed James Forrest. Yep. He's not having any Rangers players, which is really annoying a few of his mates who are texting him. Um, you know, he's not even giving he's not even giving Morelos a shout. I think he's a I think he's a stonewall certainty to be a, a nominee. Yeah, I, I think he will be a nominee. Um, scored a few goals. He start, I know he misses a lot of chances, um, but he certainly scored a few goals. And I find it strange that Ruffy's not put in James Forrest. For me, he has been the, the player of the season in Scotland. He has been the best player. Um, so I do think he will win it. Um, and I think Morales will be, will be close, but James Forrest, for me, will will win the, the crown of player of the year. Yeah, and of course, uh, the other thing about it, Ruffy, from your point of view is, uh, you know, Jambos have been uh, tweeting and, and, and texting and, and putting messages on the, the our YouTube side about mm. Christoph Berra as well. I mean, there's so many players that were maybe just forgetting some that are, uh, you know, week in, week out, performing well and not necessarily at the cutting edge of winning a trophy. Yeah, I think this, more, this year more than any other year, uh, I don't think that the... The four nominees will come from one club, uh, as it usually does. Maybe it's three and a one from somewhere else, I think. It will be spread out this year. Uh, I do admit that was a mistake, leaving James Forrest out. Uh, so I would have James Forrest. I would have Kieran Tierney in there. That only leaves me with two places left. Uh, I'm a big fan of Ryan Christie's, and I'm a big fan of Christopher Berra's. So that's why, re really, the, the Rangers players are just in the outside of my four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, what Rangers? Are, Rangers are second in the table, Ruffy. Yeah, I agree with that. But I think the players that I've mentioned have also had good seasons as well. I have to say, if Lee Griffiths hadn't been injured and and continued in the vein of form that he was on, he probably ahead of Morales as well. Yeah. Um, Barry, there's no Hubs players as well. I think there'll be at least one Hubs player, either John McGinn or. Dylan McGeoch, who I think is a, a fantastic player. I know he's had a lot mm -hmm. of injuries, but I think he's a player that I, I rate highly. But John McGinn, I think, will be in the four, yeah. along with James Forrest, Kieran Tierney and Morelos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Ooh, he just got in there. No, no, I, I genuinely think, uh, you but know. The, but Rangers have got a shot. I mean, Tavernier's had a, a, I think he has been one of the best Rangers players. Um, you could. There's a late <coughs> shout for Josh. Windass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well I done, you. That. I'll just thought I'd tell you what the pronunciation is. <laughs> Over the past couple of months, he certainly scored a, a few goals, but um, that's my four. I think that will be the four that will be in contenders. Christoph Berra, I think he will just miss out, but he has been Hearts' uh, top player. Um, he just misses out for me. Yeah, and Ryan Christie misses out as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, um, and of course, uh, the good thing about this program is Barry's also revealed he doesn't really go to Aberdeen on holidays, <laughs> so so that saves him. And of course, Ruffy, after getting pelters from Rangers fans, you've decided to wear a green shirt today. So you really, you really know about coordinating this program, don't you? Well, obviously, I'll, I'll I'll change the board and I'll have a blue shirt on, yeah, just to be neutral. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, listen, it's all about opinion. Who do you think should be in the nominees for Player of the Year? Who do you think should be the nominees for Man? of the year this is a hotly contested one uh Ruffy uh, have you got four in mind yeah well it's all us and buts at this moment in time and unfortunately we make this decision before the, the the season's ended so if you give me the opportunity to move the season on till the end with a couple of things happening uh, it would make make it a bit easier obviously Brendan Rogers winning a double treble would be number one uh, I think uh, Ross Jack at St Myrne, uh, with the resources he has and where they've been and where they are now. If yeah. he was to get promotion, he would be a contender as well. No, hang fire, <laughs> hang fire. I just spent my whole day <laughs> correcting. You mean Jack Ross? Jack Ross, Ross Jack well. played for Dunfermline. Yes, and Jack Ross as well. <laughs> he would be a nomination. Yeah. And I have to throw Graham Murty into it as well, given the scenario Rangers win the, the Scottish Cup. Uh, they end up second to Celtic. Uh, yeah. The gap was how many points last year? 30. Yeah, yeah. 30. If it was two or three or five or whatever, 
he must give me a shout from coming from a development manager into running Rangers. And I have to say, every time I hear him speaking, I think he's a breath of fresh air. So he would be a candidate as well. Yeah. Uh, have we forgotten anybody? Yeah, I, I, I'll agree with Brendan Rodgers. And I, I do think it's too early yeah. for the manager of the year nominees. And, and same as uh, the players. Um, I do think they should wait till maybe mid-April before you do that. But I, I'd agree, Brendan Rodgers, Graham Murray. But I think he, there's, a, there's a call for Stevie Clark. I mean, the, the job that he's done at Kilmarnock, he came in the were bottom of the league. He's took him up to sixth place now. Um, he's in a fantastic run. And then you've got the two championship managers for me. Um, Jack Ross. And Ross Jack. <laughs> and Ross Jack. No, Jack Ross, um, he came in, they were... They look one of the certs to go down into League One. If um, you say Anthony Hopkins, I'm chucking it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting that in my head there, just to make sure I don't make a mistake. No, for me, Jack Ross came in, St Murn were looking at going into League One, um, saved them for relegation, and then this year he's, he's got them at the, the, the top of the league, doing a fantastic job. And David Hopkins at um, Livingston is another one who I fancy that at the start of the season maybe to struggle yeah. um, for getting promoted, but two of them so there's a lot of nominees and um, but i think it comes down to it, you've got to win trophies at the end of the day for me to be manager of the year yeah. um i know brendan rogers has got a chance of winning the double double graham murty could win the scottish cup and even i know i'm maybe clutching at straws a wee bit but could never know stranger things have happened win the league um <laughs> <laughs> so you never know listen you say, i might have the last laugh you never know um but for me, the outstanding one, got to go <coughs> to Jack Ross. I think he's done a phenomenal job at, at St Murn and a, a low budget as well, because money comes into it as well, how much yeah. money they've got to go and spend. And I know his budget isn't isn't great, so that's who I would go for at this moment in time. But I do think it's too early. Yeah, um, I, I love the fact that you said that there, because that will <laughs> that, that will kick Twitter into meltdown and YouTube. <laughs> you, you've you just replaced Ruffy in the last two <laughs> minutes. Uh, yeah, I was going to listen to uh, Ruffy. If, uh, and then, by the way, if Rangers win the league, Graham Murty's manager of the oh. year, Morellis is player of the year, Rangers and we're taking him out. Mm -hmm. I'm going up that road. <laughs> <laughs> Doing somersaults, yeah. naked. Yeah. <laughs> if I was you, I'd just wear your track suit and go up the cricklewood. Um, anyway, apart from, any <laughs> apart from anything else, let's get your predictions. I watched a great match last night, mm -hmm. Chelsea Barcelona. You know they waited, they waited. I thought Chelsea were unlucky. Willian, one post, then the other, scores a great goal. But Iniesta and Messi, superb. Yeah, I, I was glad uh, Chelsea took something out of the game. I actually like Conte. I don't think he should be coming under the criticism he's coming under. Uh, but we all know what like they are in England. Uh, one minute you're up there, the next minute they're just battering you with anything they can find. So and I hope he goes there and puts in a good result. I, I, I want to see if Chelsea's a wee favourite of mine. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen. No, Chelsea's uh, not a favourite of mine. I think they're out. I, th I think they, they would have to have got two or three goals. Um, I don't think that was ever going to happen. Um, and I think Barcelona will, will take three or four off them at the new camp. Um, last night, just watching the two players that you mentioned, Iniesta, for me, has been an unbelievable player over the years. Um, but number one for me in the world is Messi. He's just the, the pockets he finds himself in, the things he does with football is out of this world. And, and the finish last night, it was the two players I just mentioned there. Great goal. Yeah, Seville, Man United, who wins? I think Man United will win. Um, in Seville? <coughs> yep, yeah. I do. I do think they'll, they'll take... Uh, listen, it'll not be an easy game, but I do think the experience that he's got in that team, and they're a big, powerful team, Man United as well, so I think they'll they'll come away um, winning that game. Yep. OK, um, Ruffy, do you see it that way? I'm going to go Seville to win by the odd goal and then to go to Manchester and win on the away goals. So Seville knock Man United out? Yes. Okay, you're having a humdinger of a week. Um, what about Shakhtar Donetsk against Roma? <laughs> Who wins that one? Uh, Roma for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so no real in-depth analysis for you on that one. <laughs> Barry, who wins it? Um, I'll agree. <coughs> I'll go for for Roma. Um, it's a difficult place. A lot of teams have struggled going over to Donetsk. Um, yeah. It's the greatest city I've ever been in in my life. Yeah, I, I've never, I've never been in, but I know a few people who have been there, and they say 
similar things, but it's never an easy place to go and get a win. But I think Rome will have got too good a player to you know, go there and get a victory. Yeah, We could only be live on air and people are walking past and, and Ruffy's actually looking at them <laughs> rather than actually concentrating on the programme. You couldn't make it up, very could you? Very unprofessional. Very unprofessional. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> last, last point. Celtic, Zenit. It's not, it's, it's Russia. It's a slender lead, one goal. Callum McGregor scored it. <laughs> Um, the stadium is not going to be as cold as everybody's making out because they've shut the roof and they're going to put the blowers on, so it might be considerably warmer. Um, and I don't think Zenit can be as bad as they were last week. No, I, I think that's obviously what the manager will be thinking as well. I think he was a bit uh, taken aback by the performance, but I, I think they came thinking uh, they would get a draw. Uh, and then obviously go back and, and, and win at home. It looked as if it was going to be that way, although Celtic did play well, but the time was running out. But they got the all crucial goal. I just don't think Celtic can go there and not concede. So I'm hoping that they get in their way goals. Yeah. What, 1-1? One, 2-1. One? Two, one. <laughs> two, one. So 2-1 yeah. they, they lose. Yes, they yeah. lose 2-1. Yeah. Okay, and uh, they go through obviously in that away goal. Barry? <clears throat> I'll go for, I think Celtic will go there. I think they will concede, um, but it's important that the defence is a sort of same game they had last Thursday. I th that's the best I've seen them for a long time, Celtic. I thought they dominated, but I will say I thought Zenit came and I think they could just turn up and, and come away with something. I was disappointed. I don't know whether it was their attitude or no. I know they've been on a winter break, but that, that's not an excuse for me. Yeah. But at the end, of the end of the day, Celtic were the better team tonight. They should have won by two or three goals, um, but I think they'll go there. As long as they keep it tight, the first 15, 20 minutes is important. I do, as I said, I, they will concede, but I think they'll come away with a one a one all draw. Yeah, um, your old teammate, actually, Andre Kinchelski, says the problem for Zenit is they've got Russians and Argentinians in the starting level, and they're all arguing with each other. There seems to be a bit of unrest. Yeah, well, I did. I, I read his article. Um, it'd be interesting to see what they're arguing about, the, the language barrier there. Yeah. South American and, and Russian, that'll be, that'll be interesting. Um, but... I, I just I, I just wasn't impressed with Zenit. Yeah. I expected better from them. I expected technically they were going to be a better team. But listen, don't take it away for Celtic. They were a better team tonight. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think they will go through. Did you ever argue with Kanchelskis? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did a few times. Aye. Yeah. I Russian and Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good argument. No, his uh, his um, his English was was pretty good. Um, the only time I had a couple of arguments. I don't know if you remember it when he stood in the ball. Yeah. I just thought that was disrespectful. I didn't like that. Yeah. Um, I know we were winning easily, but there's other ways to, to do things. But he was a good guy, Andre. Um, but I've seen him lately. It looks like he's, he's aged a, a fair bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. <laughs> Check your man here. Just, just because there's no hair dye being used <laughs> as yet. Um, so, uh, don't forget, Andre, you can contact us and we'll put you in touch with Fergie after that slaughtering you there for the way you look. Um, okay, it's all about... Oh, he was a great player. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I think you're right. It was a wee bit of, uh, lacked a wee bit of class standing on the ball and humiliating the opposition. But nevertheless, um, good player. Whether Zenit are going to win or not, you can give us your view on our predictions. It's all about opinions. Um, you can uh, give us your view on YouTube and, of course, Twitter and Facebook as well. Uh, if you want to follow us, don't forget, you can download the app. It's uh, the PLZ Soccer app. You get all the latest news north and south of the border, European football as well, competitions, and uh, no shortage of opinion. There are all sorts of things that can interest you on the app. And if you want to look on the website, www plzsoccer.com from Barry, from Ruffy and myself. Thanks for watching.